This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by nhliberty.org. Two reasons, I think. This first of all, the f- the the terror of the French Revolution didn't really come to an end until some people started losing their decorum. They would take royal after royal to the guillotine and chop them, and the royals made a point of trying to go to their death with dignity. This didn't work. It was when a uh, young you know, relative of the royals, I believe, a female. I'm not positive she was young. When she lost her decorum and just broke down, that's when it started to come to an end. They stopped the killing of this type. At least on a large scale, they stopped it. There's also this incident uh, uh, during the Waco siege of where uh, one of the mainstream videographers who got that really outstanding video of the of the shootout at the beginning as he was escaping the scene, he had just given up his seat to an ATF agent who was wounded, and he had his reporter drive the vehicle back as a TV crew. And Charlie, I think his name was, I almost ended up working with him because I almost ended up working at that station. I'd never met him. He turned around and walked away from that Branch Davidian compound, which everyone assumed was a bunch of crazies that would shoot you in the back. And He walked out of there with his gear because he'd given his seat up to agents to save their lives. Well, by the time he reached the perimeter, uh, there was a sufficient confusion or uh, ill will on the part of the authorities that they started beating him when they when he, when he got there. And he, he ended up on the ground. But anyway, he had trained himself uh, to yell for help whenever something like that happened. Uh, males normally don't do that. A woman will naturally scream, but a man will just fight or do nothing or go silent or whatever. You have to train yourself. It's like military training to let everyone know that something's happening to you. Help! Someone help me! So I trained myself to do this, and I've done it. Uh, Probably Garrett should have done it. If nothing else, at least it would have made the video more interesting. Another tactic that Garrett probably should have considered was uh, going ahead and dropping to the ground, uh, and that at least would make, (laughs) at least the state troopers are having to lean over you. Again, it's just more interesting. Your camera survives a little longer, your video lasts a little longer, and it's, you know, not quite as easy for them to grab it out out of your hand. At least Garrett got video. I mean, I hear so many stories over the last few years of all these different crazy things that have happened and no one's bothered to even try to get video of it i mean i mean a a, a, a uk a goons agents swarm the guardian newspaper it, which is becoming it's sort of becoming like the newspaper of the world like the mo- just about the most important newspaper in the world and agents swarm that place and they don't get video of it happening the agents seize their their data that they've collected, and there's no video of that happening? Maybe there is, but I couldn't find it. Yeah, there, there have been occasions where I've failed to get video of things, but uh, it, it is a fail. Do you know how much more I could have talked about the Liberty Dollar on my program if they had actually gotten video of the, you know, of the store being raided or the shop being raided back in 2008? It's not just me. Anyone who does video news needs that video of things happening to you so they can talk about you. Anyhow, Garrett got that part right. And he's generally pretty good about keeping a calm head in situations like this. A lot of people can't do that. But as I watch his activism career develop, if you want to call it that, he just seems to be becoming more strident and serious. In April of 2012, vocal anti-prohibition crusader Rich Paul was targeted by law enforcement. And it's just, his his videos just, they look too much like activist videos rather than reporting videos. 
the whole business of trying to make fun of the bureaucrats and, you know, putting, tr- drawing crowns on their heads and photoshopping the images of them and calling them Prince John and stuff like that. It just, it almost works, but it doesn't work. And it, that's the same as not working. Sarcasm that really isn't all that funny. Uh, Orson Scott Card said one of the best ways to make someone stop hurting you is to make them stop wanting to hurt you. I mean, these guys are clowns. They know it. They they just know that if they fill out paperwork, they got their buddies that'll take care of all that for them. And if I were some of these city bureaucrats, I'd just be wanting to hurt Garrett more because of the the, the you know the the fun making that's just more hyperbolic than it is fun. And maybe Garrett isn't having fun anymore. Maybe this is becoming too much of a job for him. If so, I hope he's at least making money at it. Well, I'll leave you to it. Have fun. Thanks. I think the world of Garrett, I want him to be safe. I want him to continue being active. But he's just starting to sound and even look a little too much like some of those uh, socialist hippies and black power activists from the ugly 70s. At least he's giving me something to talk about. What are you giving me to talk about? I don't know if you were aware of this or not, but uh, there are some pretty scary things happening in this building, the State House in Concord, New Hampshire. Fortunately, there is the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. They're fighting back, but they need your help. They offer free training. They offer courses, ways that you can learn how to be most effective in fighting for liberty inside the State House. Visit nhliberty.org to find out when the next class is. If you take it, you'll be a much more effective voice at stopping these folks from taking away your liberty. nhliberty.org